All right, Aljamain Sterling might just be the Bantamweight GOAT with this win over Henry Suhudo. A very close fight. We're going to break this down. What's up, guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. If you guys are new to the channel, hit the like, subscribe button, comment in the comment section below, and I will answer you guys. But let me know in the comment section below, who do you think won this fight? This was an extremely close fight, and I'm going to break down all my thoughts on it. And tomorrow, I'll post a video about Bilal Muhammad Gilbert Burns, and I'll go more in depth about that fight and where I think Bilal Muhammad stands in the title picture. So if you guys want to see that video, let me know in the comment section below. Also, I'm sorry I did not go live last Last night as you guys know i've been pretty busy the past few days but i actually have a pretty good excuse read the description i will explain what happened after i saw ufc 288 and i will tell the full story in the description so anyway guys let's just get into this all right you know it's a good day when we have a sponsor the sponsor of today's video is actually a sponsor i'm super excited to work with is a red a red is a streetwear brand from the uk that is designed inspired by mixed martial arts they have designs inspired by fighters like darren till patty pimblett and so much more the people over there were nice enough to send me a hoodie of my own as you guys could see you know it says kill everybody like seriously i had no idea what these hoodies were gonna look like but i was insanely surprised these hoodies look dope as hell look if you guys want to go check out their designs which i really suggest you guys do go hit the link in the description and use code jack10 to get 10 percent off of your order that means you're gonna help me as well as help yourself because you're gonna get some dope ass merch while also getting a massive discount but let's just get back into the video all right, Aljamain Sterling Henry Suda. Now, this was a fight that has been hyped up since UFC 280, all the way back in October. And even before that, we knew Henry Suda was going to come back. Finally, the guy comes back. He's fighting Aljamain Sterling. And Aljamain Sterling has had a lot of bad luck throughout his career. With winning the title through disqualification, to having a very close fight with Piotr Yanda, having an injured TJ Dillashaw, it was just excuse after excuse after excuse for his legacy. And this, although it was a very close fight, I think most people think that Aljamain Sterling did win this fight. It was very close. And if you say Suhudo wins I'm not going to argue with you I can understand an argument but I actually kind of favor Aljamain I think Aljamain did win this one but it would be interesting in a rematch because I think Henry coming back a little more active would make the fight a little bit more interesting and I did pick Aljo by decision that was my prediction so once again another right prediction as you guys always know but that's enough of that but I didn't expect so much grappling in this matchup I thought this would be kind of a stand-up fight with Suhudo not wanting to risk the submission game of Aljamain Sterling and Aljamain Sterling not being able to take down Suhudo but both things happen you know Suhudo went for the grappling and Aljamain even got takedowns of his own and in the first round I thought it was a clear round for Aljamain it was pretty close in the beginning but I think Aljo did enough to close that round and that was a very very clear round in my opinion for Aljamain Sterling and the second round razor close once again I mean this could go either way but I gave it to Aljo as for the third round I gave it to Suhudo. it was razor close and Suhudo did pretty good at the end of the round so I edged it for him then the fourth round was very very close I went back and forth who do I pick Aljamain or Suhudo? overall went with Aljamain but razor close close round once again i think rounds two to four you can really give to any guy and i wouldn't argue with you but the fifth round was a clear clear round for henry cejudo i don't think you could score that round for aljo he wasn't as active so i think only the clear rounds really one and five and everything in between was razor close 50 50 this was honestly one of the closest fights i've seen in a while but like i said i gave the nod to aljamain sterling and there's so much to discuss post fight because there's so many implications that this fight has number one being who is aljamain going to fight next it looks like it is sean o'malley judging from that crazy post fight interview with sean o'malley hopping into the ring basically causing a whole altercation with him and Marab. Marab stealing his jacket like that just that face off got me so hyped for the fight like I was like holy shit I cannot wait for this fight can this fight happen as soon as possible my guess is August 19th in Boston most likely I don't think O'Malley is from Boston they keep saying that's his hometown but maybe it is I don't know I thought he was from Arizona regardless that would be an amazing fight to headline there and man that just seems like they actually have beef you know I didn't think that this beef was so intense and you could tell the Cejudo beef was fake it was kind of fabricated kind of just to sell the fight you could tell that very easily but here Aljo actually looked really pissed and so did Sean O'Malley the two are going back and forth you know even Aljo grabbing Sean O'Malley I mean who do I think would win in that matchup right now I think Aljo would probably win but Sean O'Malley does have pretty good takedown defense so on the feet I think probably O'Malley has the advantage with his power but I can see that being a very very close fight I think that Aljo is gonna have to be very careful entering in with O'Malley because he's so long and rangy and has such power but yeah I think that fight should happen as soon as possible like let's get this division going you know Aljo did reveal at the post fight press conference that this will be his last fight most likely at Bantamweight the Sean O'Malley fight moving up to 145 pound to face off against Volk but my question for Aljamain is does this prove that he's the greatest Bantamweight of all time and I gotta say I would still give the nod to Dominic Cruz you know let's see how he does against Sean O'Malley if he finishes him or something like crazy then yes we have to put him ahead but Aljo might be number two I mean he beat Henry Cejudo granted on a three-year layoff and when you look at his resume forget the asterisks I know that you guys can make arguments about his wins and things like that he submits Corey Sanig in the first round defeats Piotr Jan twice even though the first one was yes not really a win but whatever 
whatever beats TJ Dillashaw and now beats Henry Cejudo like this is a run that we haven't seen like when is the last Bantamweight run that we've seen just like this like I kind of want Aljamain to stay at 135 pounds I know he has the whole thing with Marab but I would love to see how he does against guys like a Corey Sandy can rematch a Marlon Vera you got Umar Namagamedov coming up you know I know he's not gonna fight Marab but that would be an interesting matchup as well tons and tons of interesting matchups at 135 pounds because the division is so stacked I think he could honestly become one of the greatest of all time if he keeps winning and he stays at the Bantamweight division but I think if he goes to 145 I think he'll probably lose to Volkanovski if I'm being honest so I think that the move should be stay at 135 pounds but I know he has a whole thing with Marab I mean why does Marab go to 125 or something you know that's just me I also want to talk about the other side of the coin which is Henry Cejudo where does it go from here looked like he was contemplating retiring right then and there personally I don't think this is the right thing to do yes I understand you know Henry Cejudo probably doesn't want to go back out there and fight for a title shot the guy is 36 pretty old I think under welterweight fighters over the age 35 are like 2 and 28 in title fights so there isn't a lot of hope for Henry Cejudo however he had a razor close fight against Aljamain on a three-year layoff Aljo fought relatively recently in October and you know that's the story's not set and done here you know Aljamain could go down as one of the greatest bantamweights of all time and honestly this could look like nothing on Henry Cejudo's resume also on the other side of the coin you know O'Malley could knock out Aljamain in the first round and that easily sets up a Cejudo O'Malley fight O'Malley wants to fight Cejudo there's beef there they had a back and forth in the past O'Malley even coming out saying he thought Cejudo won the fight I mean there's tons of possibilities there or I like this option which I saw Brett Okamoto tweet out why doesn't he just go up the featherweight imagine a fight with him and Max Holloway I mean who are you gonna pair Max Holloway up with anyway he just beat Arnold Allen he has no one to fight unless he moves up to lightweight make that fight I mean yes I do think that Max Holloway would probably win that fight because he is much much bigger than Henry Cejudo but if that's his goal then yeah go up to 145 pounds a win over Max Holloway will give Henry Cejudo a title shot no doubt about it we've been setting up this Volk Cejudo fight for a long time and Max Holloway is an amazing name to add on Henry Cejudo's resume be an interesting fight like I said however I would probably give it a Max Holloway I think he would get it done pretty convincingly in my opinion so if I'm Henry Cejudo I'm either trying to cut down to 125 pounds which he even said himself he doesn't think he's gonna make anytime soon or he stays at Bantamweight but I like the Bantamweight option stay at Bantamweight I think a fight with him and Piotr Young would make sense maybe him and Rob Font Rob Font coming off a beautiful win against Adrian Yanez or Cejudo versus Marab they had a back and forth at the press conferences ton of fights for Henry Cejudo and even if he's not the champ he could collect more names on his resume I mean, this is a talented Bantamweight roster right now. So I wouldn't mind seeing any of those. And yes, in conclusion, I am excited for that Sean O'Malley fight. Like, I was like pumped waiting for that fight. Honestly, I never thought I'd be so excited for that fight. But just the back and forth just sold me on that one. There was a lot of other great performances on the card. I'm going to be talking about Bala Muhammad tomorrow. Jun Yun Yang knocking out Jessica Andrade in the first round. Drew Dober getting knocked out for the first time in his career. Kind of a questionable stoppage, but whatever. And I can't wait for the next pay-per-view. What is it? Oh, right. It's Amanda Nunez versus Irene Aldana. At least we have Charles Oliveira to look forward to. But guys guys that's gonna be it for today's video i hope you guys enjoyed the subscribe button like comment and share and thank you guys for watching you guys are always the best fan base in mma thank you guys for watching i'll see you guys in the next one this video is sponsored by a rep make sure to check them out in the link in the description and use code jack 10 to get 10 percent off of the best mma merchandise streetwear and all of that go check it out in the link in the description and enjoy the video